hey, um, chemical distractions and I are having a chat. Now, this is the gentleman who made the video on me um, about the benzene issue with my fuels. I do want to clarify something right off the bat, okay? Just so everybody knows. Him and I were on good terms, and he is not racist, okay? <laughs> I know people always want to say that. Oh my goodness, he is not racist. The truth of the matter is, like, we have to kind of remember, he is an actual chemist, right? So as a chemist, he sees these things, he sees concerns, science is all about critiquing, but it also takes some bravery to critique somebody with a large platform because, you know, there's going to be backlash because, you know, people have hope. Um, with what I'm doing and it can always kind of come off in any way like oh, you're just trying to stop him So I do really have respect for him for that and looking out for me and like, you know He just wants to help out and see it you see it through and see it work just like me He just had a different perspective when it comes to safety and guys, let's be real. Come on. Let's be honest I needed that double check because look what happened to me. I was working on a distiller. I was distilling Highly flammable fuels in my backyard barefoot and I ended up in the hospital so clearly i need the double check i need the reassurance i need the critiques when it comes to anything safety we didn't need the next thing to happen for me to be to end up like walter white literally be walter black and get lung cancer right we didn't need that to happen so thank you again very much for um you know doing this and also for your time here and i'm glad we we're able to clear things up you like i didn't think your video was disrespectful at all and you're just critiquing like if we don't open our minds to that we're not gonna get anywhere you know, I'm cr I'm very critical of these companies that that lie about recycling, for example, right? And that's why I'm doing what I do. So, you know, I'm all about that all the way, and that's what science is, right? You tell me, I, I make a claim, you say something and disprove my claim. I do further research to see if I can disprove yours. In the end, we both learn and grow. So, thank you, truly. Yeah, that's a healthy mindset. Right. You can do one Google search and find that there's benzene and plastic pyrolysis oil, but you can also do one Google search and find research papers on how to remove get benzene from gasoline and how to, um, you know, neutralize benzene or turn it into things like benzoic acid just as easily. So I think that people are saying not necessarily that you owed a solution to bring up a problem, but more of like, it seemed like you were doing the research purely on the problem and not at all on, you know, any type of way of it being solvable. Like this was some type of problem that couldn't be solved. And that's how it kind of came off. Yeah. And that's a fair, that's fair. You know, I, I'll try and do that in future. I mean, I obviously can't turn back the clock, but no, you're right. I, I could definitely try. I didn't offer a ton of solutions, um, and I could have done more research to provide solutions. Um, but part of it was I was just sort of going off of the things that were off the top of my head that I sort of knew about chemistry, because I do know a thing or two about benzene. I do know a thing or two about uh, different chemicals. It seems very difficult to be able to extract benzene from that. Um, and I, like, I, I was trying to think in the top of my head. I should have done research, honestly. But I was trying to think, and it's just like, this isn't a trivial thing to do. And it goes sort of beyond benzene. I mean, benzene's part of the problem. You can do research and stuff like that, but like, it, it takes a very in-depth level in order to optimize a machine to get it to the point where it's producing less or more of the things that you want. It's, it takes a very in-depth level of understanding. But pyrolysis is a very sensitive process. There are ways to completely change your yields and variables by just increasing the temperature. There's so, in fact, so much so that there's a different process. Well, slow pyrolysis, fast pyrolysis, then flash pyrolysis. When you increase the temperature even more to like, we're talking above a thousand degrees Fahrenheit, you know, and stuff. It's called flash pyrolysis. And in flash pyrolysis, you crack the chains so small that you pretty much don't even get oil. You pretty much just get vapors, right? That's just an example. Another way, another amazing way, an easy way to adjust variables and completely change things is pressure, either high pressure or low pressure. I've been studying vacuum pyrolysis and my machine runs under vacuum now, 15 inches of mercury, give or take, and a continuous operation. And with a vacuum, since you're pulling the things out, once the things break down, there's less side reactions that happen. You had mentioned in uh, PET, polyethyl terephthalate, that there could be side reactions that form uh, with the phthalates. Uh, once it's broken down, that could result in more benzene. But under vacuum pyrolysis, that may not be the same, right? Because it's being sucked out so quick, 
from the machine and then cool down for the condenser that they don't even have time to combine. Right? But you know, this we're just speaking all theory here because I had, you know, the machine's not even done, haven't sent this stuff out, but I'm just saying that like, yes. there, like there's so much. What you wanna do is you wanna optimize what you get out the most you can before you worry about any type of refining do anything less and get any type of benzene if i know there's a way to get no benzene so like it's such a um a delicate process with so many things that change that you know it just is going to take a lot of research and a lot of time and I'm, I'm all for it that's what i'm here for that like through all this this is going to provide a solution for the whole world so even though it's a lot of work it's tedious it motivates me and you know I'm doing this at a, at a bigger scale, you know, on a personal level where it's like dangerous, but I'd rather work out these kinks before I am doing it at a huge scale. And then it does do exactly what you said and complete the whole neighborhood or the whole road, you know, cause right now it's just me getting turned into Michael Jackson when I get burnt. I don't want my whole neighborhood getting turned to Michael Jackson. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Good points. Um, yeah, I, I think that, um, gosh, there's a lot, there's a lot there. Um, I think that you're, uh, <laughs> uh, I think that, you, I think that you're right. Um, I think that the, um, I, uh, <laughs> I feel too great under pressure. <laughs> no pressure, man. Just a conversation. You also had mentioned um, benzene being difficult to distill out from gasoline because they're so close in boiling points. I immediately was like, well, that's not true because you can do vacuum distillation to allow better extractive distillation of close fraction products like that, right? And then of course the truck thing as well. Like it was kind of like very surface level. Like there were some things, um, like when you had mentioned my machine runs under high pressure when you pulled up the explosion clip when my machine itself actually runs under vacuum the exact opposite of that and the distiller just exploded because the vacuum pump wasn't on to pull the pressure out right you just kind of like skimmed through my channel and then you had uh or you have a chemistry a basic chemical understanding of chemistry and so you understand the dangers of benzene and stuff but you didn't go much deeper than that i do truly believe that people are overplaying the degree of danger i did my research on benzene it most certainly is uh is a carcinogen not to play with but people will say things or like, even in your video you were like uh from the exhaust of the truck like it's gonna go over the neighborhood you know uh, with pyrolysis everything is captured right that until i refine it i'm not just like leaching i'm not just pouring it into the ground i'm not just you know burning it off into the air all the oil, almost all the oil I've made up to this point, I've just kept in my uh, jars to refine and then to analyze it. So it's not an immediate environmental risk to me or anybody else in, unless I have extreme situations like explosions and leaks, which of course are not, uh, is not supposed to happen. So I think that that was some, something that I don't think is fair because the truth is this, all chemistry is dangerous. All chemistry is dangerous and all chemistry not only puts that person, but many other people around them at risk to some degree, but that does not mean that it ha it's, a, it's a threat to a degree where you can't, you shouldn't do it. So like, let's, let's say like this, for example, I'm creating these fuels that are contained and they're not just being emitted. I'm not leaching. I'm not pouring it into the ground. There was the kid that was making the nuclear reactor in his backyard. That's a threat because that is literally irradiating everybody around my fuel i'm not like taking my fuel up to my neighbors and letting them sniff it you know what i'm saying another thing in your video was a lack of acknowledgement there was a section of your video where you were like well this dude is just a welder you're kind of alluding to he really doesn't know what he's doing he's just selling people that he knows what he's doing but he doesn't know anything about chemistry he's just a welder yes i do not have a chemical degree uh, a chemistry degree through the power of the internet and the edge of information i have done vast amount of research on this process and how distillation works and the chemistry of the process works that's how i was able to you know know what to look up for when i made the rebuttal video on you there has to be a balance right where you you tell somebody to be careful without kind of like discrediting and like shutting them down because i feel like that's the vibe a lot of people got like 
They're kind of like, you're telling me I should just give up. And if we do that, humanity won't progress. Most of the best inventions in this world have come from people that were not accredited in their field. If you have a chemistry degree, that is amazing. But if you don't, I don't think that should be something that holds you back. I think that you need to do your due diligence and your research. You need to do even more if you don't have a degree. You should not be like me and be out there barefoot, you know, do the PPE and stuff. Uh, it takes bravery and it takes um, an innovative problem solving mindset and most importantly the ambition to just go out and do it to get things done because these companies these governments aren't doing this right they're not doing it like we need it to be done as just a welder right i said i don't care that i'm just a welder i see that there's a problem in this world and i want to find a solution and i'm gonna just figure it out even if i'm not accredited i don't have to me i didn't say it as i had the time to go the course of grad undergrad then grad school to get a degree just to start and then get a job and then then i could start the machine i saw it as we only got a few years into these microplastics are in literally everything and they're giving us cancer and stuff so i gotta figure out a solution now it can be dangerous and i have experienced the danger and the injuries but it also was a great mindset to have to get people to be more innovative because you don't hear about that as often as you used to back then you know people creating things in their garage anymore yeah, no, I, I do think that people can innovate without a degree. Like, by all means, it's totally possible. And yeah, no, I, I might have been a little disparaging, and I, I regret that. The thing is, like, <laughs> I've talked to a lot of people uh, who do, like, hobby chemistry and stuff like that at their home, and um, a lot of the times I feel like they're sort of missing things that I learned in school. Because sometimes the sort of broad category provides a lot of education that you normally wouldn't think to even ask about. A lot of yeah. things like safety, which I think you're doing safety, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty okay as it is right now. The thing was you talked about like how you wanted to modify the machine, how you wanted to change the machine up and how you wanted to like the auger and stuff like that. And um, the thing is, it's like those parts don't really make much of a difference. Oh, let me clarify that. That was a huge miscommunication. So that information you got was f from somebody that uh, is a part of the Discord server and has been a, a follower of what I've been doing for a long time. That was not from me. Shaftless auger has already been incorporated in the system. On I'm on Mark 4.5. The shaftless auger has been in the system since Mark 3. That's been a purely mechanical thing to help the system work. So. Yeah. What it's been up to this point has been, I've been building these machines in my backyard, so many variables doing it by hand and getting, using secondhand parts from microwaves. Get a machine that does not have so many variables. So that way, when I can, uh, you know, start to really get scientific with things, it's not, you know, it's, I, I actually can have um, accurate points of comparison. So I got to test all those fuels I've just been holding on to my fuels. People see the, the videos where I just burn it for a few seconds. I immediately put it out after, usually have a mask on. Then people see the videos where I'm holding up the carbon saying, this could be turned to biochar, which could eventually be a fertilizer if properly refined. But I never throw it in, in the ground. I just am saying the potential of what it could be. I do understand that, that could be misleading. In short form content, it's very hard to give the whole story, especially when you are just trying to catch people's attention and open up people's minds to what can be done with plastic but the truth of the matter is i started this because i'm passionate about the environment because i don't like companies just leaching out waste and stuff i started this project because i hate throwing plastic in the trash knowing that it can end up in the land for our ocean so for me i'm not gonna go out on my end and pollute the, my own immediate environment it's my most viral video ever um where i said that i said this is pure carbon um, and I shouldn't have said it was pure carbon. I'll say that because it most certainly is not pure carbon. It has, it does have, it does have things mixed in it, and the purity of it is unknown until I get it tested. You, you made a point in uh, one of your previous videos that there was benzene. The benzene could be removed and then sort of added and used for other things. I don't know if, I don't feel like <laughs> chemistry doesn't usually work that cleanly. Um, that you could just sort of remove things and then use them to. Do other things. You mentioned uh, that it may not be easy to just extract the benzene and use it for other things. I respectfully disagree with that. You know why? Because benzene is, nat is naturally found in crude oil. Refineries take that crude oil, they put it in their refiners, the cat crackers, all that, and they get the benzene out 
and they use that benzene to make plastic. So it is possible all the technology already exists to not only extract benzene, but get it out at such a degree where you can use it to do things with it. Crude oil has way higher amounts of benzene in it than is what is allowed on the road. And they had to get the, the benzene out of that crude oil to make gasoline that's road legal. So they had to bring it down to, you know, less than 1%. So there's, of yeah. course, they're doing it somehow, right? They have to be, or otherwise the gasoline would have too much yeah. benzene in it. Now, maybe they're at such a big scale where they're able to do it economically. Maybe I can't do it economically. Maybe I have to just sell my fuel to already existing refineries and they deal with it because they already have the cat crackers. And I always told people that this machine, the value, it's not a power plant. The value of the machine is that it's getting rid of plastic and truly destroying the plastic. Now, yes, it may make some carcinogenic things on the back end, but at least they're contained. Unlike plastic left in the ocean, those microplastics are not contained. The ethylene and methane that releases from the plastic breaking down under photodegradation is not contained going right up to the atmosphere, 40 times and 25 times worse than CO2. That's not contained. At least everything from this process is captured and controlled to where we don't have to emit it. That's the value of pyrolysis to truly deal with and destroy plastic completely. And you can figure out what you do with the stuff from then. We just happen to make things that can be fuel. But another thing you could do with pyrolysis, these oils, you can just turn them into new plastic again. They have all the components within them. One of the major ingredients of plastic is benzene, right? So if you look at the type of people who follow me, it's not just pyrolysis enthusiasts. It's not just chemists. This is the world because we collectively, and you included, we're all tired of the plastic mess. We know that we consumers, we try to do our best. We put the plastic in the recycle bin and then they throw it in the ocean and say that they recycled it to us. We just want our environment to be clean. I don't care what size you are, you can be the most conservative person. Nobody wants to go to the beach and surf with plat ugly mounds of plastic everywhere. Nobody wants their fetuses just to have microplastics in them and your hair and just everything. They found microplastics in testicles. I can't even dunk my nuts in your mouth without microplastics getting in your mouth. Like, come on, you know? So, you know, people are so fed up with the plastic and they're so tired of these industries lying that a solution is imminent okay that's a huge just opening for a solution and whether it's me or somebody else i really don't care if it's not me but it's going to happen and it's going to be a method that destroys the plastic on a chemical level because we've already tried mechanical recycling and it's failed it's got us to where the pla the oceans are now so you know that's at the end of the day that's all i'm about i just have the hypothesis that my quick pyrolysis will be the way the best if it can be done uh, but if it isn't, yeah. then, you know, I'm open to figuring out something different or somebody else may. And yeah. I, yeah.